imagined initially that I would just get up here today and wing it, but my wife said it was all much too important to just wing it. So I set down on paper some thoughts on the making of art, which I'd like to share with you. John Ruskin, who founded the Ruskin School of Drawing and Fine Art at Oxford, where I studied, was deeply committed to the concept that the purpose of art is to uplift and ennoble the viewer, listener, or reader. He saw the making of uplifting art as a moral imperative. Leo Tolstoy held to the same thesis, which he had himself gotten from his study of Ruskin. As a painter, I can only agree. Art is a sacred undertaking. It strikes me more and more as a spiritual quest, an ongoing spiritual meditation. It is about asking questions and distrusting easy answers. Even if an answer is hard won, arrived at only through enormous struggle, a color relationship that finally works, a spatial arrangement that finally works, a concept or attitude that finally works, Every time, one begins after a bit to dismiss, sorry, to distrust the thing precisely because it does work. One goes back out on a limb and the whole crazy process starts all over again. Henry James said it beautifully. We work in the dark. We do what we can. We give what we have. Our doubt is our passion and our passion is our task. I like James's concept of the artist working in the dark. The painter looks at his canvas and asks himself or herself, hmm, I wonder what would happen if I did this or this or this. There's only one way to find out, and that's by doing it. It's vital to the artist that the artist allow himself or herself to make mistakes. I like, too, James's concept of art as gift. Another writer put it this way, art, like prayer, is a hand outstretched in the darkness, seeking for some touch of grace which will transform it into a hand that bestows gifts. The beautiful person who said this, Franz Kafka. It is now well over 100 years since Vincent van Gogh died. One feels that we owe it to the memory of his achievement and the manner in which it was achieved, to remember the following. Artists must search for truth with integrity. Dealers must keep in mind that the importance of art has nothing whatsoever to do with money. Critics must recognize their responsibility to make every effort to be correct in their judgments. Appreciators must experience works of art with the same degree of effort and integrity as the artists who created them. Van Gogh, wrapping up a painting to send to a friend, wrote, I send you this painting as a handshake in thought. His was indeed a hand that bestows gifts. Gustave Flaubert wrote this, If your work of art is good, if it is true, it will find its echo and make its place in six months, in six years, or after we're gone, what is the difference? This is a beautiful riposte to the career strategist. In other words, worry only about making sure your work is true and good. Everything else follows on from there. Sometimes when painters are painting well, they feel they are living up to something. It is as if the right and true shapes, lines, colors are already inside them and they just want to help these shapes, lines, colors to get out. Sometimes I will say something like this to a young starting out artist, to young starting out artists, and as lovely as that image may be, my listeners will sometimes stare at me for a moment and then say, yes, but how do we find a dealer? <laughs> what they really want to skip over is the crucial necessity of making a lot of bad paintings on the way to real discovery. They want to, to skip over the painful work of facing their own demons. They need to read Van Gogh's letters, and they need to remember Flaubert's injunction. 
It's true enough. Sometimes when the painting is really alive, really going well, one feels something like the conduit through whom the work is passing, in which case who or what is the real source of the work. All long-time painters are well acquainted with this phenomenon. They are acquainted, too, with the phenomenon of their art heroes being there in the studio with them, watching every stroke, keeping them honest. If El Greco is looking over your shoulder as you work, and Vermeer, and Delacroix, and Piero della Francesca, and yes, Van Gogh, you'd better be worrying about that painting and not about your dealer. Paint toward vulnerability. Don't worry about appearing sentimental. Worry about being unavailable. Worry about being absent or fraudulent. Risk falling on your face. Risk telling the truth as you understand it. If you've been given the immense privilege of being an artist, and it is an immense privilege, you have a moral obligation to do this, to tell the truth. And it is a revolutionary act. Truth is always, in a sense, subversive. You have to work every day, whatever your mood or inclination. If you wait until inspiration strikes, you're going to spend most of your life waiting. In any case, when inspiration does strike, you'd better be in the studio where you can do something about it and not be at the pub or on the beach. My best advice to aspiring artists is twofold. One, make and keep a schedule. It doesn't so much matter what your schedule is as long as you set it and keep it. It is your ritual and salvation and greatest statement to yourself. The second involves that inner passion Henry James talks about. For each artist, it is a different individual passion which no one else will really understand. It can't be taught, it can't be willed, and at times you will feel cursed by it. But if that passion is there and it's yours, you need to pay attention to it. So these two things, the schedule from willpower, the passion from who knows quite where. Talent, quote unquote, doesn't seem finally to be the bottom line, but rather, however engendered, the need to make art, the hunger to make art. Anyone who can imagine doing anything else should. When you look at the early work of Van Gogh, say, or of Paul Cezanne, you just know that nobody looking at those pictures exclaimed, my, such talent. But they were driven, passion, that desire to give. Only make art your vocation if you can't help yourself. It is really kind of a disease. Richard Pousset Dart, very good painter, by the way, to find the artist as a child who escaped. I suspect that's quite profound. One thinks of painting as contemplative. One thinks of painting as meditative. I personally don't think it too over the top to say that painting is prayer. John Ruskin, in urging young artists to look intently, almost microscopically, at a feather or a bit of tree bark or a pebble off the beach, believed one can discover the universal in the particular, can know by extrapolation the creator in the particle of creation. T.S. Eliot said this, we shall not cease from exploration, and the end of all our exploring will be to arrive at where we started and know the place for the first time. Thanks very much.